What I've got here is a Homestead Stratford Superfan. Six blades, 52 inches, polished brass finish. The Stratford part of the model name refers to the fan's outward appearance. Very closely resembling, nigh identically resembling in fact, a Whisperfan 4. The Superfan part of the model name refers to this fan's method of control. It uses a DC brushless stack motor provided by GE, as well as a specially made variable speed wall control. Back in the early 1980s, GE approached Casablanca about implementing DC motors into some of their fans with the idea of having a more efficient fan motor. However, part of the deal was that moving forward, Casablanca could only get motors supplied to them from GE, and on top of that, GE could still propose this DC motor technology to other fan companies. Casablanca turned down this offer and in response came up with IntelliTouch, Ed Hart supposedly coming up with the draft design for IntelliTouch over the span of just one weekend. So from there, GE approached Homestead with a similar offer and they accepted, as evidenced by this fan right here. Coizel also accepted this offer from Homestead as a few Coizel superfans have surfaced, and I'm not sure if there are any other fan companies that accepted it also. Coizel and Homestead are the only two that I'm aware of. So, I've talked about this before, as this is the third superfan that I've videotaped on this channel, but the DC Motor Tech was very ahead of its time. While DC motors in higher-end fans in current day is rather commonplace, back in the 80s, nobody else was doing this. So, it was a very innovative design for that reason alone. Unfortunately, though, these fans were rather faulty for two reasons. One of which being the driver boards. They just weren't that reliable. They had a high failure rate. Which... Circuit boards not working out great for technolo or highly technological fans back in the 80s is rather commonplace. It would happen with IntelliTouch, it would happen with Slumber Quiet. The boards just sometimes didn't have the greatest longevity. The second reason is the flywheels. Homestead's later rubber flywheels were absolutely horrible. They were notorious for hardening up, drying out, cracking, and breaking whether the fan be installed or sitting in its box. No matter the circumstances, the flywheel would find a way to self-destruct. And this was especially a problem for the super fan models, as DC motor fans, particularly the older ones, when they first turn on, they jerk about, sort of twitch back and forth. So if you have a hardened, brittle flywheel, and the fan is sort of twitching back and forth, yeah, that flywheel is surefire going to get obliterated. Thankfully, though, that flywheel issue does not apply to this unit. This is an older superfan that uses the old flywheel design. Back when Homestead first switched over to rubber flywheels in 1983, I want to say, they very closely copied Casablanca's Safelex flywheel design. And looking at this flywheel, it is not in any way difficult to discern that it is a copy of that design. And as such, it is nice and flexible. So, when the fan first turns on and the motor twitches back and forth, the floppy spokes absorb it and the flywheel doesn't break. Which is excellent. Unfortunately, though, this flywheel design only lasted about two years for Homestead before they switched over to the aforementioned sucky flywheel design. I believe the reason that they switched the flywheel design, aside from perhaps cost-effectiveness, is that they wanted the screw hole patterns to be symmetric so that the fans could be installed with either a four-blade or a six-blade configuration as this older flywheel design has an asymmetric screw pattern, meaning you can only install it with six blades. Or three blades, but I doubt many people were doing that, if any, at all. I believe the reason for this is because they hadn't changed the blade iron design at this point, and I believe these blade irons were designed with 36-inch Hunter Originals in mind, as, fun fact, when Homestead first started out, 
they made decorative blade irons and face plates for Hunter Originals. And you can tell this is the old blade iron design because it has the skinnier arms. The later designs have slightly thicker arms. The blades are antique oak. And thankfully, they are pretty well in alignment with each other. Homestead's blades do have a bit of a tendency to sag, but no, these ones are pretty level. Very nice. Homestead label can be seen over on this side, and it is the early 80s Homestead style label that they used from, I want to say, 1980 until about 1985. When I first got this fan, it did not have a light kit on it. Uh, this light kit that I put on it came off of one of my Homestead Coventries. And the glass, which is authentic Homestead, came from Matt Cody. There is the top, and there you can see the DC stack motor, completely sealed. When I got this fan, it came with a three-foot down rod, so instead I'm just using this short down rod that came off of a Whisper Fan 4. And that brass is still nice and shiny. You can see me in the reflection perfectly. Overall, this fan is in really good condition, and for some reason, homesteads can be rather difficult to find in good condition, so very happy that this one is still nigh immaculate. The superfan wall control can be seen right over here. So how this control works is you have two knobs, inner, outer. The outer knob controls the fan speed. The inner knob, you can click it, and then from there, you turn this up, it turns the lights on. And turning the inner knob dims the lights, eventually to the point where they just turn off completely. Rather interesting setup, but for what it is, it works, and it is fairly simplistic. So yeah, let's go ahead and demonstrate this bad boy. Thankfully, the driver board in this one, as far as I can as blah, sorry, as far as I can tell, is still in perfectly good working order. So that's great. Showcase the lights here one more time, real quick. The lights on this do come through rather dim. That has 90 watt bulbs in it, which are the bulbs that its sibling fan came with. And I'm only churning probably about 45 watts of power out of that, so... A little strange, but for what it is, it works. Alright, now I'll go ahead and start the fan up. And there you can see the twitching. And it starts up in reverse. Let's see if I can reverse it back to counterclockwise. One other tidbit about the superfan wall control is that if you turn it off and then back on again in a quick fashion, the fan will reverse. Or at least it's supposed to. Come on. There we go. So as you can see right there, the fan does tend to jerk about a bit before it fully recognizes what it's supposed to be doing, which, yeah. Hard flywheel no like that. Let's see if I can turn it down a little bit more here. The variable speed knob is pretty sensitive, so if you want to get it at a specific speed, you do have to be pretty light, delicate, and or specific with how you turn the knob. What we have right there, though, is a pretty 
good low speed, bordering between functional and aesthetic. I got two of these Homestead Stratford superfans from a Facebook Marketplace listing. As I mentioned previously, the other superfan had a, had a light kit on it. It was aftermarket, and these bulbs in this one are the ones that came with it. Uh, the listing originally was only for one superfan. However, when I showed up to the house that the listing was posted for. It was a big renovation project, whole house being gutted, you know the sorts. I walk inside, and in the family room, another super fan was hanging up. And I immediately ask, is that one for sale too? And the lady said, yeah, if you can get it off the ceiling, it's all yours. And since the house was being gutted, there was ladders and other tools scattered everywhere, so grabbed a ladder, took it down, easy as pie. And the one that actually was in the listing was already on the ground. It was fully assembled, but it was on the ground, so all I had to do for that one was just take the blades off. Anyways, go ahead and turn this fan up a bit. When I first came across the listing, the first thought that popped into my head before I had actually clicked on it, as is common for me when browsing through Marketplace and coming across a six-blade homestead, first thought in my head was universal, in reference to the what is hands down the most common six-blade homestead model to be found in the wild in current day. And nine times out of ten, when I click on the listing and get a closer look at the fan, it is in fact a universal. But not this time. So I see it, I think, universal, click on the listing, zoom in a little, and I go, oh no, not universal, super fan. And from there, I knew I had to get it. And the rest is history. All right, turn it up a little bit more. The older Stratford Superfan design, aside from not having a pull chain or a variable speed knob sticking out of the side, as far as I can tell, is absolutely identical to a Whisperfan 4 of the same era that would have a rubber flywheel. I'm not sure if they continued to make the Whisperfan 4 into the symmetric screw hole and bad flywheel era of Homestead. They may have, though I've never seen any from that time. But if they did, then that version of the Superfan and Whisperfan 4 would also be identical, save for the control methods and inner electronics. Alright, turn it up some more.
it up even more. One of the biggest compliments that I can give the Superfan is that this thing is quiet. One of the quietest fans in my entire collection. I imagine that was part of the design objective with this ceiling fan, but... Or rather, I mean, m mission accomplished is... All I can say about that. All right, now we'll go to full speed. And I mentioned before that these blades are very level with each other, and it shows, as there is no wobble, which for a six-bladed fan is not a common occurrence. The more blades you have, the more likely it is to wobble. Turn the lights back off. This fan is absolutely gorgeous. And there you have it, a polished brass Homestead Stratford Superfan.